Hey folks, my name is Philip Melke. I'm the 3D Web Experience Product Manager for Esri, and uh, welcome to today's session on preparing 2D and 3D blueprint uh, blueprint information for ArcGIS. Uh, just uh, as a bit of an overview on myself, I'm the I focus on 3D on the web. Uh, but before joining Esri, I was a crime analyst, a GIS supervisor, and the CIO for the City of Redlands. I also developed a crime analysis training uh, manual for the CMAPS program and had the opportunity to teach it to a lot of, uh, a lot of police departments across the country. Effective. So there's a lot of different practical public safety needs for incorporating blueprints. Uh, but one of the biggest ones that I think is often overlooked is having a complete central system of uh, record, which is one... Uh, one common truth, a common operating picture that everybody can have. Uh, no digging for blueprints or a PDF that's uh, on a broken link somewhere. Being able to have all of this immediately accessible for easy distribution for web and mobile clients is very important for public safety needs for a variety of different reasons. But one of the biggest ones is that you can immediately answer um, immediately answer questions with information that's in that blueprint data. Simple things like where are the doors, but often you can find things like where are the Knox boxes, how long is this hallway, all of this stuff that is really very information. And if it's geo-referenced, it's a lot easier to be able to find, and it's also a lot easier to orient yourself to the rest of the, uh, the map that you might be looking at and considering when you're planning uh, an incident response plan uh, or if you were working through some of the pre-planned collection information. This, uh, by geo-referencing some of this blueprint information, you're also going to be able to provide better detail for more data collection opportunities. So it's frequently the case that fire departments do fire inspections in which they need to be able to mark the locations of Knox boxes or uh, sprinkler controls and things along those lines. Uh, we have a solution that makes that very easy to be able to, to collect this in the field. Um, and part of that field collection process is ultimately needing to know the detail of where it is that you're placing and locating that information. There's a lot of future needs as well. So, uh, well, this example here, NextGen 911, is uh, really driving the way that uh, 3D GIS is going to be developed over the next 10 years. And ultimately it comes down to not only is there an X and Y location for when um, a mobile caller calls 911, but there will also be Z. So being able to locate them in the building um, with approximate uh, floors that they're on, as well as information that's associated with that building, requires the development of a 3D GIS. And that's uh, important to understand, especially as we're uh, really just preparing for this standard and preparing for the future. Uh, and this is important for public safety to be aware of how to do these things because ultimately public safety is going to drive uh, uh, drive municipal, municipal technology adoption and policy. This comes down to the way that planning departments collect this kind of information. And kind of more future facing as we collect or connect to IPSs, interior positioning systems, the ability to be able to see people moving inside of a building based off of tracking is, uh, is a reality that is being done now. Um, and the first thing that needs to be accomplished to produce this is actually a, a good 3D GIS of these buildings. So we're going to show you three practical workflows for blueprint preparation. First, we're going to do a very simple geo-referencing and publishing blueprint image information for ArcGIS Online. Then we'll, we'll walk through this uh, workflow for geo-referencing and publishing CAD data. And finally, we'll geo-reference and publish Revit data, a 3D model that's used for architecture, engineering, and construction. So let's get started. Okay. So in ArcGIS Pro, what we're going to do is add this image directly to our ArcGIS Pro stage. And you'll note that we'll have an unknown coordinate system um, uh, uh, error that, that gets uh, shown to us, which won't really matter. We'll be able to ignore that error because we're actually going to geo-reference it here to our base map where we have some of this building information. In this case, we have a blueprint of uh, one of the high schools here in Redlands. And what we want to be able to do is go to the imagery tab and in that, what we're going to define is a geo-referencing workflow. So by clicking geo-referencing, this will bring up some other dis uh, information for us. And we're going to click Fit to Display to put that image uh, directly into our stage so that we can see where it is. And you can see we've got some information in this blueprint information. 
But what we want to be or in this blueprint image, but what we want to do is to ultimately add some control points to rubber sheet or georeference this so that it fits directly to our base map. So I'm collecting the add, add, adding the control points first on the image and then second on the base map. And so I'm finding some really discernible pieces. Corners of buildings work well. Sometimes the freeway does. It's really important that these blueprints are actually true to scale. So I've drawn the first image. Now I've taken the turned the image off so I can see where that is. And I'm clicking to where that image needs to be stretched to. Now this will do it on the fly here. We have auto apply selected. And you'll see that we have some of these images now that the image is really draped well over that base map. But we're, we're going to keep uh, working on this just to make sure that we've got a couple of really good control points to change this georeferencing and make sure that we've got everything right. And you can see that there's a little bit of slop there as far as the distance from the from and the two. So by having this uh, really in, at a different corner, this caused this to warp the image appropriately. And I think we're just going to round this out with one more here. So you can see clicking back and forth really gives your eye a chance to see where these buildings, where this image has been georeferenced to. So I've got another good from point in a different section of that warped image. And uh, I'm just going to uh, now collect it, uh, collect the second point here that we're georeferencing to. And this will stretch that image there and you know this is actually pretty good i think that this will this will do the information it has a little it has more information than what we had on our base map which is really good to know and we can just hit save now and uh next we're going to show you quickly how to publish this information so by just going by right clicking here on this we're going to sharing and share as a web layer and this is a pretty standard process then to be able to share this to arcgis online and what this will do is to identify the type of data that you're sharing, and uh, you'll enter information on the name, the summary, some of the tags, so it's easier to find and incorporate into web maps. And uh, this will ultimately have us uh, producing a feature that we can then share and view on ArcGIS Online. Okay, next we're going to talk about georeferencing CAD data. We saw how to do this with an image, but we're going to do this with the actual data here so that we can share features that are representative of lines and polygons that are the doors and walls. So first thing we're going to go to do is go to properties where we're going to actually uh, examine and set our, our uh, projected coordinate system. And in this case, we're going to look for California State Plain. That's where, the, that's where we're placed. And once we find that California State Plain, uh, there we go, we'll just hit OK. And we're going to go on to uh, with a new def new projection system. So now we're going to add that CAD data and do the same thing with uh, redefining this projection. But we're we're actually going to just do the first floor in this case. You see, we're out here in the middle of nowhere, and uh, in this case, we want to be able to define that polyline section. And we're going to go to uh, to define this projection now. And we're going to find our current map, and we just hit the, so the CAD matches the base map. And when they when we end up georeferencing it, it'll actually line up pretty pretty nice and neat here. All right, so I'm just going to be looking for that area that I need to georeference to. So I'm just going to start by typing in Redlands, California, and our geocoder systems found it, and. Now we're going to zoom in on, and we're going to place this. This is the CAD for uh, building L on Esri's campus. And once we find L, we're going to go back. Let's see. There we are. Okay. We're, we're going to go back into our georeferencing tab. And now we're going to hit the fit to display or move to display button there. And so we can see where that image is. And so we actually uh, have to move it to fill in the gap of underneath what's underneath the base map there. So we're gonna play for a little bit, hit move, scale, or rotate, just so that you can get the line up there. And you're just spatially seeing how it is without changing the original source data here. But the CAD floor plans do not come pre-referenced unless you use like AutoCAD for 3D here in this case. So here we're just taking a look at the rotate and the, the different tools that we have here. Okay, now, so after we're done moving, we're going to save our geo reference. And 
So this is actually uh, kind of a helpful trick to uh, that can make it possible for you to do apply the same projection for a couple of different layers. Um, so we don't have to reference all of them. And what we do in the fi file explorer, after you've saved your first floor and you can locate that, that WLD file, uh, rename it to whatever your, your AutoCAD floor plans are. And uh, we're going to go into the file reference system here just to make sure that we have that renamed at the same way uh, so that that WLD file will be associated with the DWG file, the CAD data that we're opening. And that just basically sets that, that, that uh, georeferencing so that you'll have a pretty easy way to go uh, to be able to apply this to multiple or to, to multiple levels. Uh, in this case, one, two, and three, which we just uh, applied that world file to, and we're just adding them now since that world file has been uh, copied. So uh, we did, we placed it in our CAD layer, that, that WLD file that we're working with, uh, and it, where it's in the same folder. So now all of, all of the data is now uh, referenced for floors one, two, and three. And um, we, it's all oriented georeferenced to our base map. And so now uh, we're just taking a look at some of the details here. All right, and so the next thing that we're going to do just as a helpful tip is to be able to arrange these as group layers. Uh, because each CAD file you'll see with the annotations, the points, the lines, multi-patches, that can kind of add up a little bit. So we're, what we're doing is just defining three different group layers for floor one, floor two, and floor three. And by selecting each one of those sections of group layers, we're just going to arrange those features that belong in the group layers and dragging them into floor one, two, and three and makes it uh, really easy to be able to select which features between all of them that we want to be able to show. Now that we've got this data into an information model, we can then publish this to ArcGIS online uh, or uh, do other things with it. We're going to talk about georeferencing Revit data now, which is a 3D architecturally designed data source that most recent buildings will have. So when we start, we're going to start in a local scene and we want to be able to view underground. So the first thing that we'll do in this local scene is to set up this uh, possibility for navigating underground, as you see there. So um, now we want to start the georeferencing work and we're going to find the, the define projection tool. And this will show if we already have a coordinate system defined for the data. And if not, we'll then select it for that data. So we're looking for the input. And we can browse to any feature. So we know floors is good because uh, a good choice for georeferencing. And we're going to set this to California State Plain Zone 5. Now, this output of the tool then adds the layer to my scene. And if the Revit model had real world coordinates already specified, we would have seen it in the right place. But this is displayed in the Pacific Ocean. So in this case, it's based on the data is based on a 0, 0, 0 origin. So we're going to continue with the floors layer highlighted. And we'll use the georeferencing tool in the Manage tab for the building context menu in Pro. Now we'll zoom into the, our building's location using the Locate tool. And we'll type in the street address, which happens to be a new building here that we're having on our Esri campus. Now we can move it to display the tool with the graphic feedback. And it may not, I may not always have the right data that I need to make a precise repositioning of my Revit data, but I can get really close by using other references like imagery on the map, or in this case, our base map. So we need to reset the anchor points for move, rotate, and elevate ground tools. And so I can use this uh, control click sequence to reposition the point that I'm using to manipulate the model. And I'm, we're also zooming in by pushing Z and then using mouse gestures to zoom in and pan and uh, orbit in 3D just to know that we've got a good view. And we see that the Revit model has already been oriented to true north and we're really just kind of uh, making sure that we've got it all set. I can save this georeferencing session and then add a 3D world file with the, the WLD3 extension. It'll be generated on the disk named uh, the same name as this Revit file. And with that all correctly georeferenced, I can pull in any and all of the other features that are referenced in this data, and they're going to automatically be positioned correctly. All right. 
So once this has been uh, shared now, this can be published directly as a building scene layer and viewed within Scene Viewer. In this case, we're actually using an application that consumes scenes, just like uh, Web Maps Experience Builder, where we can see where some of our three-dimensional incident feature collections are within that building scene layer. You could really get a sense of how important that this can play for a backdrop. Another building scene layer that we have here that is the Atlanta airport. And in this case, we're, we're taking a look at that data that's been published from that Revit data source using a slice tool so that we're able to see all of the data that we have in there. We can search for individual rooms or some features uh, or use this slice tool to kind of tilt and get a better view uh, to understand potentially where all of our assets or security assets are planned or where incidents are or where an emergency call may be coming in. You know, these are really helpful in public safety situations, ultimately, to have your overall 3D base map. And you can do some other interesting things with it. In this case, uh, I'm going to show line of sight analysis. So this is a tool that you can use just a configurable 3D app template, where uh, using all of that data, you could really get a sense now from that building scene layer, what can be seen and what is invisible in red, what's visible in green. 3D can be very, very useful for a lot of different uh, different use cases and ultimately making sure that we've consumed the data sources uh, either as old and as basic as scan blueprints to as recent as Revit data that can immediately provide a method for incorporating uh, the detail in an architecturally designed building. All very important for public safety, and uh, hopefully this has been a good uh, set of workflows to help to orient you to understand more. Thank you very much.